when Jesus is in the house, he always has something fresh to say. So why don't we, Lord, I want to receive fresh from you today, daily bread. Just imagine, oh, by the way, I'm Adrian, if you are visiting, and um, it's great to see you. Come and say hello at the end. Just imagine a land under a restrictive regime. Imagine a nation under a restrictive regime. Instead of prosperity, there is grinding poverty. And instead of freedom, there's oppression. It feels like it's dark. What has been God's blessing in the history of a nation now feels like that's a distant memory. Ungodly leaders, wickedness abounds. And people just use the word, it just feels very dark. Just imagine that sort of atmosphere. Of course, I'm talking about thousands of years ago, aren't I? Israel, God's people, is in decline as a nation, has abandoned following God. God had chosen a nation to be his example to fill the earth, his like model, his prototype. But that nation had basically said, stuff you, God, we will go our own way. And darkness came on the land, despair, decline of truth, rightness. And instead of uh, diverting their attention back, they kept on this car crash course. But, and there's always a but, and I want us to know the but today in whatever darkness you might feel, we might feel, a nation might feel. There's a glorious but in this story today. So do you need a but? Do you think I'm grinding in this, I'm stuck in that, it's dark. There's a but, and he's got a name. You know where we're going. So there's this man, Isaiah. Okay, he's a... Uh, a prophet is listening to God's people and he's one of the voices that are saying, come back to God, turn around, put the brake on and return to him, avoid this car crash. And of course, everybody said, uh, we don't listen to you, <laughs> actually. Some of these other people are saying it's going to be okay. There was a lone voice, Isaiah. But he prayed, and Isaiah has some wonderful visions. I don't know if you've ever read the book. There's some bits in it that are poetic, and it's hard to follow. But there's some moments where the cloud and the darkness breaks, and Isaiah goes, <gasps> and he sees the Lord, the glory of God. And he sees a lamb, and they're going to a slaughter. And he sees today this that we were going to read. So Isaiah 9, if you're going to look on your phones just going to read some verses from Isaiah 9. Nevertheless, he says, there's going to be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, God has humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Get this, verse 2, chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You've enlarged the nation. You've increased their joy. They rejoice before you as the people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you've shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulder, the rod of the air oppressor, Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. It would be fuel for the fire. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. I've repeated myself there. Oh, isn't that good? As he ponders, it's dark. Friends, it's dark, but a light's coming says Isaiah. It's dark, nation of Israel, but a light is coming. Open door, it's dark, but a light is coming, has come. There's hope. And then Isaiah uses these pictures. So stick with him. Okay, in his culture, he's using pictures. It's a bit like a light coming after a storm, waking up after storm Arwen. And you've got quality people like Ben who fix your power. And the light has come on. You thought, thank goodness that is over. It's like a glimpse after a battle and it's been bloodthirsty and bruising. But it's finished. 
It's like a battle that was very key to the Israel. They had 300 people defeat an army of thousands. The story of Gideon, look at it in Judges 6. One man who's hiding in a wine press, God says, you're a mighty man, and that man leads an army of 300 to defeat thousands. Isaiah says, it's like that. And you thought, wow, how could that be? Friends, when the light comes, we're like, look, what could it be like? Isaiah has some other things. He says, it's going to be like enlarging the nation. The people are thinking, we're oppressed, we're getting smaller. There's not many left. It's, it's like that everything is coming against us. Isaiah says, it's going to be like enlargement. It's going to be like multiplication. We're not just going to make it through, he says to them. We're not just going to be hemmed in. This is enlargement. Are you excited about that? Are you excited? Okay, some of you, you can see where we might be going. It's like, it's like when the Battle of Gideon came, they smashed some jars, 300 men or so, smashing some clay jars, routing an army. It was like light came. It was like <gasps> a big moment in the darkness. And this dawning revelation, it grows on Isaiah. Did you hear a bit? He sees, it's going to be like joy of harvest. Now for most of us, I guess it's like the joy of shopping. I, I don't, what joy could it be? Because we don't celebrate harvest. We're not, we're not tied in as our ancestors would be. Like we have summer holidays. Why do we have summer holidays in August when all the best weather's ever? Because it was the harvest time where everyone went. Now you look at some, old, some of the old films and where I catch a bit of history where the whole community went. There was celebration. All the harvest is gathered in. Well, hey, they have a party, celebrations. Cultures do that. We somehow lost it. The joy of harvest, what's, what's that? But like the joy of victory in battle, the joy of victory. I wasn't around, but I've seen films and photos of VE Day where everybody came out onto the streets, parties that spilled out across London. Were there anyone about here? I don't know. So you'd, you'd be one of our senior people. Maybe, if you're, maybe you're watching a lot, I don't know. But actually the celebration that happened on the street, it was like, it's finished. The oppression of Nazi Germany has been broken. Victory. And people spilled out. What I've noticed actually, and it's really interesting, I think, for our culture, both of the joys are community joys. When the light comes, it wasn't a, oh, you're going to be happy with your bit of light. No, it's going to be like community dancing because of harvest. It's going to be like streets breaking out of joy, victory. You know, when light comes, yes, it touches us, but it does something. It's corporate light. Have you caught? The light's coming. Stick with me. This coming light, what's it going to bring? It brings fruitfulness. This coming light, Isaiah said, is going to bring fruitfulness. It's bringing good news. It's exciting. It's, can you taste it? Can you catch it? It's going to be fruitful. Again, the nation being cut down, being pruned. Isaiah says, I can, I can see the light and it's going to be fruitful. Even the boots and the cloaks of battle, they've been oppressed. Invaders have come, will be coming, trampling the streets of our holy cities. Even the boots and the cloaks are going to get ripped out and burnt and destroyed. What a picture for people under oppression, under this heavy burden. Even the yoke that the oppressor is going to bring will be broken because this light is coming. It's going to be like slaves all being set free. That's going to be such community joy. Now you'd think people reading and listening to Isaiah would have been really stirred. The tragic truth is that some, many, chose to ignore and reject his words. <laughs> the sound of great victory, hark! <laughs> so what is at the root of this boots, br boots burnt, cloaks burnt, rod of oppression being broken, celebration of harvest and joy? It's the people have seen a great light. The people have seen. The people have seen a great light. What is it like? 
you get up in the night and there's no light and you're stumbling around and I've gone into the wrong court, I'm looking for the door and I've bumped, there's the dressing gown, okay, along a bit and there, okay, but when the light comes on, it, it changes everything, doesn't it? Okay, what was a bit dark and stumbling, I sort of, I can see easily now, it brings clarity, the light comes, that's why Isaiah's people didn't want the light, they didn't want clarity. Wouldn't it be a shame to miss the light that came because you didn't want clarity of your own position? I, I don't want to know about where I am. I'd rather live in ignorance, please. Friends, let me ask you, do you know this light? Do you know this light? Do you know the light that has come into the world? And more than that, do you live, do I live in the good of this glorious light that's come? Do you we live in the good of it? Is our light, is our life lit with the light? Where are we going to find it? Maybe you're here thinking, where could this light be? Isaiah wrote hundreds of years ago, thousands. His people were similarly asking, what is it, Isaiah? Tell us more about it. He tells us. He says it's going to be a person. He's praying. He's catching a glimpse. That's what prophetic is like. It's okay, I've got an inkling. I've got a. It's like there's a person. There's going to, no. It's a son. There's going to be a king. This son, a boy king. He's grab, scrabbling around. It's going to be like a ruler, and not just like any king. He's going to like rule over everything, with the authority. This king is going to have a government rule on him. He's catching sight of this light that's come. Isaiah says, it's going to be a son, and this son will not restrict, he will enlarge. Wouldn't you like to know that son? Wouldn't it be great if we could also know that son? This son is going to bring joy of fruitfulness. He will destroy the enemy, and he's going to shatter the yoke of oppression. He's going to shatter He's not going to tolerate, well, what can we do about this? He's going to shatter the yoke of oppression. Let's just pause here for a minute. See, friends, if you and I, if we are in darkness, where do we look to find hope? Where did Isaiah look? He looked up and said, God, I, I need to see something. Show me something. God begins to speak. Friends, if you and I are looking for, in darkness, the place to look is in this and up. There are so many other things. Lots on the internet. So look at this, do that. Friends, the way that gives light is looking up. So this is the first little message, this little step for you today. If you are looking for light, look up. What great lights. Thank you, team, all those who are serving, putting these up yesterday and around. Friends, we look upwards that we find God's plans. I've lived a little while longer than some of you, and I found that however good I thought my plans might be, could be, actually they're always less than his plans. <laughs> And so sometimes it's, okay, God, I surrender to your plans. And it's as we look up and bow our knee, we find God's plans, God's light. Oh, it was so much bigger than I ever thought it could be. So much bigger than my little plans. Friends, will you look up? Will you look up? Will I look up at this light that has come? We can read God's plans right here. Read them. We can read them and know them right here. Do you want to catch a glimpse of the sunrise? Sometimes, folks, you have to get up early. <laughs> uh, at this time of year, it's about 8 o'clock, but sometimes you have to get up. And... How much do we want the light? How much? I'm challenged as I've prepared this. How much do I want the light that has come into the world? I'll tell you a bit more of him. You see, the New Testament, the New Testament is really clear. This light is not a philosophy. This light that Isaiah sees coming is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God that we are celebrating, singing of, he is the light. He's the light. Not me, not Dave, not Open Door, not politics, not wealth, not the nations, not some planetary rescue um, like saving the planet. Jesus is the light only, only. All those other things might be fun and good, but without Jesus, everything else is darkness. It's darkness. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the light. Becky said earlier, she read, the light has come into the world, says John. 
and darkness has not overcome it. Imagine the light coming. And Jesus himself, he said this, I am the light of the world, of the cosmos. I'm the light. Whoever comes to me will never walk in darkness. Okay, God, there's a promise in you that I want to see fulfilled in my life, in Open Doors' life, in the church's life. God, we want to see you and not walk in darkness. Lord, and he's still working that out in me, and maybe he's still working that out in you. God, come and work out, because there's a truth in you that says we won't walk in darkness. We might walk in mystery. We might walk in not quite, Lord, what is the purpose? Like Isaiah, but we won't walk in darkness. Don't confuse mystery with darkness. Sometimes there are things we don't understand, pains we carry we don't understand. But as we trust God, we find light that comes. Let's look. What else did Isaiah say in chapter 9? Hundreds of years before Mary and Joseph. About this light. This, there's a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he's going to be called Wonderful Counselor. Have you met him? Have you met him? The wonderful counsellor. I'm so excited he's here today. Mighty God. Have you met mighty God in this light, in Jesus Christ? He will be called Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Ah, Lord, I want to meet you. I want to know those things. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Okay, Lord, I, I, I want to live in the good of that. Because sometimes we, we feel like we need to help God get to the end. Sometimes we need to like, help his purposes, don't we? Because we like to think, can he get to the end? Or maybe he needs me to, to do it this way or that way. Oh, Lord, no, there's no end to you. I surrender. I surrender. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. What a vision, Isaiah. The zeal of the Lord will accompany, accomplish this. Hey, there's a son going to be born. There's a son going to be born and given to us. Okay, he's born. So there's a humanity about this king that's coming. There's a humanity and he's going to be given. If I could give you a Christmas present today, you would... You say, oh, thank you, Agent. You'd, you'd receive it. Have you received the son that was given? It's not enough to know about. It's not enough to think, well, yeah, I've seen some nativity things. It's not enough to think, well, yeah, I once, I once met him. I had, a, I had a, a, something happened in a carol service. Or something happened in a church service. Yeah, I pray. Have you received him? Is he with you? Have you received him to say, make your home in my heart? Friends, that's the light that's come. Are you receiving him? See, I found it's not enough to know that I received Jesus many decades ago. And I'm thankful for Sunday school teacher and parents. It's not enough that I received him. I said, my God, I need you this week. Are you like that? Lord, I need you today. I need you to break in to my thick-headedness, my stubbornness. I need you to break in to my blindness. Come, I need your light. And you know what? I found the answers. <laughs> I'm so really excited. He answers. Oh, thank you that you've come. He's born. He's fully man, yet given to us. He's born with heavenly authority. He's not just a wise guru. He's not just some, oh, he has some good teachings, this man Jesus. He is born with heavenly authority. He's our king. He's a kingly light. He's the light above all lights. He's wonderful counsellor. Do you need counsel? Do you need wisdom? Oh, it's Jesus. The light of Jesus is greater. I've had some counselling over different years, just helping me navigate some, some bubbly things and uh, some rocks. And actually, I found that there's one counsellor that is outstanding above any others by miles, with no disrespect for counselling. It's Jesus, wonderful counsellor. Wonderful counsellor. 
Is he your counselling light? Is he my counselling light today? Friends, the light has come. It's important. When Isaiah writes these four, which one comes first? Isn't it interesting? He starts with wonderful counsellor first. It's not just a list of four like Isaiah thought them. Okay, the order matters. Wonderful counsellor is the first name of our glorious light, Jesus. He's the, he's the light that brings victory. God, I need to know some victories over recent months. Do you? Do we? Do we need to know victories in our lives? Lord, break the rod of oppression. I found sometimes I'm very good at being the rod of oppression in myself. I found out praying with Dave and Rob a couple of months ago. I said there were some things that I was holding myself like under a rod. I didn't need anyone else to do. But certainly the enemy said, yeah, I agree with all that. And I, I, I put myself under a rod of oppression. Want you know what the answer was? It wasn't trying to be good or read the Bible more. The answer was to say, Jesus, would you break this rod of oppression? And he did it as I forgave myself for putting under a rod that he never did. Jesus never puts us under the rod. And as I surrendered to that, it broke the rod of oppression. I find it's just brought life back to my heart and my love for Jesus. It's wonderful. Jesus breaks the rod of oppression. He's also our everlasting father. Gosh, we need fathers, mothers. Is he the light to you of everlasting father, everlasting mother? He's also the prince of peace. He enters your and my conflict, often our own conflict or the conflict around us. He's the light that is the Prince of Peace. That's the light and he's here today. This is the best bit of any preach to say, why don't we receive him again? <laughs> why don't we receive the light? Because he comes to give his light and he comes with a blessing. He comes to, with a blessing of his light. Now when light comes, Brings a ah, oh, it brings a spacious release. Jesus comes to bring a spacious release. He comes to deliver us from darkness. Is there any darkness, Holy Spirit, in our lives? Come and shine. He loves. He's the light. He comes with grace. Is there any deliverance? Is there any sense at dawn? Lord, would dawn come? Jesus brings light today for us. You up to receive him again? Maybe for the first time. I don't know if you are here and you think, I have never received the light like you talk. I hear of Jesus, but I need to receive. Then you say, Jesus, you're the light? Would you come and show me? It doesn't need to be some fancy prayer. You can use your own words. But friends, one of the signs of light, as we mentioned, is increased joy. I thought, oh Lord, I, I need some of that. <laughs> I need some of the increased joy in you. Wouldn't it be great if Jesus came and brought joy to us? Not just because of the lights and we're feeling a bit Christmassy, but because the light... Hey, if the light's with us, if the light of God is with me, I'm not going to walk in darkness. Oh, I can trust you. He shatters oppression. I want to speak, any of us, if you are under oppression of yourself... Talked about my rod. Maybe there's that the same as others. A rod of oppression of unforgiveness. Friends, if you're under a rod of unforgiveness, Jesus' light breaks it. Oh, don't live under that. You don't need to. And he restores the good like a new day. That's what Isaiah is speaking of. A light has come. We're not waiting for him. We are not waiting for the light that has come. It has come. He's here. So will you receive? Will you like, open the curtains. Open the curtains of your heart. Let's receive afresh or maybe for the first time. You've been listening long enough. Thank you uh, for that. But I want to ask now, Holy Spirit, come. As I've been talking, maybe he's put some finger on. So just let's come to him. We'll see where we go. We've got a little bit of time. It's just, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and minister light to us. 
come and minister light to us. Come, Holy Spirit, and minister light to us. Why don't you come to him with a picture of your mind, your body, your heart, and say, Lord, I open the curtains to you. Shine your light, come. Shine your light, come. Shine your light, come, Lord. Is there anything in my life you would shine? How's my, how's my forgiveness going, Lord? Is there anybody that you would say, forgive? And that includes myself. That was a big one for me recently, maybe for you too. Lord, I need to know your breakthrough. Come, Holy Spirit. Just as I was praying in the week, I had just different scenes just pop into my mind. So I just trust God. So one, in your family, you are arguing. And I think something had been broken over the kitchen table. And maybe, I don't know, a mug. Maybe there'd been an argument and something had got smashed in a flare-up of, uh, and God says, I see and I have wisdom for you because I'm the Prince of Peace. Maybe you've been in an argument this week with someone, someone close. Actually, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Lord, would your light come in that? Maybe it's in the home be at work but Lord bring your peace part two that God was shining his light on some of it's like your mother maybe even she's dead I don't know or elderly but it's like her control smothers you still you still live wanting to please your mother It's like she suffocates you to make choices that you would want to make. I just speak, if that is you, I just speak to motherly control. Motherly affection is good. Motherly control is unhealthy. So I just break that oppression in Jesus' name. That is in you, an unhealthy control of your mother, maybe from nations away or very locally. I break that. In Jesus' name, in your memory, you still live. I want to please her. I can never please her. I break that in Jesus' name. And maybe too, you've had stomach cramps. I don't know, someone this week, stomach cramps of anxiety and fear. You're fearful for your future. You're fearful for next year. You're fe- everything is fearful and it's just causing you to have stomach cramps, upset stomach. Even something like, I don't know, IBS. You just, actually it's anxiety and God says, I am the Prince of Peace. So I just speak to stomach disorders. If any of those things or any of you, if you just want to stand up, we'd love to pray. I'm not going to ask you to name which one, but if any of you, any of you want to respond to any of those, just stand up and we're going to pray someone stands up near you, maybe just around, just love to pray. I want to proclaim light. Bless you. another way of opening our curtains say Lord come and fill come and break in Lord God come come Lord Jesus come Lord Jesus Lord we speak your light we receive your light has opened your church. Lord, as families, as individuals, as your community, 
for we receive your light. And as the light that has come brings freedom in your wonderful name. We speak your light. speak your light I just pray for a release of joy a release of joy like gathering in the harvest like the victory songs after battle will come and release joy can I pray for us when we're finished shall we stand I just declare over us how much joy (laughs) Lord how much joy could you pour out on us Lord come with the joy of your light like the joy of morning Lord the joy of a sunrise the joy of victory Lord I pray that we release Lord as elders a spirit of joy among us a spirit of joy that overflows open door that we go out with joy. We're led forth in peace. The mountains and the fields break forth in joy, clapping before us. Lord, let your joy be on us. Joy of Jesus is light. A joy that sets us free and those we meet. A joy that changes atmospheres because wherever we go, Lord, you, the wonderful counselor, everlasting father, are with us. And that's what we be to others around us. In your wonderful name. Oh, man.